Hello all, welcome to R&D Labs with me Rohan and today we are going to continue where we left off in the previous tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we had seen how to query LMA file library using a get method. So in this tutorial, we are going to add parameters, that is the URL parameters to your get request. So how do we do it? Let's get started. In the previous tutorial, we had covered how to send a GET request using LMFI library to HTTP pin.org. So we had used the open source URL tester, uh, which is HTTP pin.org, and we had passed a GET method to it. Now, by default, the method or the method type that we're using is GET. So that is the reason why we are not using a special variable for passing the method type, either GET or POST. Since by default, uh, the method type is get, so that is the reason why we are not using uh, a variable to specify our method type. In the coming tutorials, when we are going to implement the post request to LMFI library, we are going to use a method type, uh, which will be post. So if you're thinking why we are not using that, so this is the answer. Next, what we have done is we have uh, created a serializer variable and passed in uh, three error codes to it, which are success messages. And after that, we have sent the request to LMFI, and uh, we have got a response back, which we have serialized, and we have printed the output window, after which we have shown the size of the response and the response time uh, in bytes. So this is what we have done in the previous tutorial. And if you have just joined from this tutorial onwards, I'll recommend you to just go back and view this tutorial that we have covered. I have explained the uh, the details on how to query uh, the LMFI library. So I'll add the link of the tutorial in the description box below for your reference. So in this tutorial, what we are going to cover is we are going to add a URL request to HTTP pin.org get method. Okay. So for this, what we're going to do first up is we are going to build the parameter, okay? And we are going to create a dictionary by the name parents, and we're going to add uh, maybe the employee record into that dictionary, okay? So let's create a variable first. Let's write bar parents, okay? And I will just open the square brackets and I'll write name, I'll write John over here, okay, and uh, probably the next one will be the age, okay, and I'll add 35, and uh, I will add the department as well, so it looks as if it is an employee record, <laughs> okay, so it would be HR, and I'll leave it just there, okay. What Next, I will be doing is I'll be creating a variable of type string so that I could concatenate the dictionary values into the string and build uh, a URL parameter string for you. Okay, so I'll just create var s params okay, and I'll initialize it with empty string. Okay, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through the dictionary. Okay, so this is a dictionary that we have created by the name params. Okay, so I'm going to iterate through the dictionary using a for loop. So I'll write a for statement for key and value, sorry, value in params. So params is a dictionary name. And what, uh, how does the, uh, the URL parameter look like? Okay, so I will write a comment over here. So uh, the main URL is this, okay, so I will write it here and after which uh, you will have to add a question mark to separate the URL from the parameter, okay, and after that you will have to add the parameter, parameter1 key, okay, so which in our case is the name okay and we'll have to add is equal to parameter two sorry parameter one value to it so we have the url and we are separating it with a question mark 
Okay, and then which follows uh, the question mark is the key and you have to add the equal to and then you will have to pass the parameter one value to it. Okay, and this will be continued after you add uh, ampersand sign and then you have to add the parameter two key and parameter two value after that. So this is how your URL will look like. Of course, there will be no spaces. So uh, just for your understanding, I have you know uh, added the space so that you can see it clearly. Okay, so this is how you are going to uh, build the parameter. Okay, now let's go down and uh, we will add s params is equal to. Okay, so I will not write equal to I'll write plus equal to using the operator and you write key plus. value okay so i'm concatenating key and value into params into s params excuse me so uh, so s params plus equal to key equal to value so i'm concatenating the key and value into params along with its own value okay so these are called assignment operators and i'm going to use that so that my code looks clean all right so next what we're going to do is we are going to print the statement okay just to see how this has built up into uh, the key and value okay so for my understanding and for me to show it to you i just wanted to know how it does it look like okay so i'm going to build up a uh, print statement over here so let's try key and i will write okay it's a bit tricky here that's it so i've had key and value so that if I go through a for loop, I just need to know what my key and value look like. Okay, so this is for your understanding and even for me uh, just to know how it builds up. Okay, and I will just leave it there. Next, what we have done is we have in the, uh, in the, in the for loop, we have used an assignment operator and we have filled in the s params uh, variable with key and value. Okay, so we have built this part okay but we haven't added the ampersand to it okay so we will have to add that as well uh, so i will add the ampersand to the end okay so you have this part ready now next what we're going to do is we are going to check okay this is just for a good practice to know uh, whether the string is empty or not so that you process ahead so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to write an if block so if uh, not as param dot is empty okay so in our case it will never be empty but in your program maybe you need to check whether the uh, variable is empty or not okay so that you proceed with validating it with processing it okay so I'll open up the curly braces and I'll write s params is equal to okay now uh, the part that I'm going to write here is this part where you have to separate the URL with the parameter with the question mark. So I'm going to add a question mark here. Okay, so what I've done is I've checked whether the string is empty or not. If the string is not empty, then you add a question mark. Okay, so plus s value. Okay, and after this, what we're going to do is we are going to check whether the value of string value has got uh, ampersand at the end or not. Now, if you notice, this for loop will run, but the ampersand will be added and extraneous ampersand will be added to, to the end of the string. Okay, so in our case, it will lead up to a uh, misconstructed URL. So we will have to remove this. Okay, so what we'll do is we will check whether if s param has got an ampersand in the end or not okay so dot has suffix okay and you will have to pass ampersand if you'll say uh, Rohan yes uh, we do understand it will have an ampersand but it is always a best practice to check the variable to check the string for your conditions okay so we know that we have built this and you just don't have to go right in and remove it 
you'll have to first check whether the uh, string has ampersand or not or any other condition on the string or not so that you proceed ahead uh, to add your uh, conditions okay so you will say s params dot remove last simple right so if uh, the parents has got a suffix of ampersand resulting from this statement here just remove that from the uh, last index okay so this is what will happen with the string now after you have done all this uh, what you're going to do is you're going to attach or you're going to concatenate this variable with the url okay so you're going to bind this and it will be a complete url string okay so we will write s url is equal to s url and s params together so you have concatenated s url with s params and the rest of the code remains the same okay let us build and see great and i will run this in the simulator and i hopefully uh, think that there shouldn't be any errors let's do that Taking a while. All right, so let us click the button. There you go. So now what we have done here is uh, I have added a break just after the for loop has executed. The if statement is also run or executed, and we can see that the arguments are printed on the output window. So let us give it a try to execute the code. All right, it's taking a while to get a response back. Let's maximize the output window. So you can see our URL is right here. Okay, and uh, the original code for getting the uh, status code is there, the size of the response is there, the response time is also available as you can see it's a tad longer than the last execution that we had done and uh, over here this is what we're looking at, the arguments. So you can see it is clearly bifurcating the argument from the URL and you can see the age, you can see the department and the name. Okay, So the argument has been passed to http bin.org and uh, you can clearly see that it has been uh, serialized and shown to you. So this is how you query a URL with a parameter using Alumify library. I hope you like this video. If you have any doubts, please reach me out in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And in the coming tutorial, what we are going to cover is we are going to cover how to query an Alumify library using a post method. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hitting the notification button so that you are notified next time my video comes in. Cheers until then. Thank you.